Good morning, my dear students and friends. Myself, Dr. Ravi Khan Patel, and I'm going to start your video lecture class. In the last video lecture, we have discussed about the digestion in small intestine and bile acid. Okay, and in this video lecture, we will talk about the absorption of digested products. Okay, so here, uh, first of all, you see. So here, what we have given absorption. What is the absorption? You know very well when the digestion completed. So uh, next step, that is the third step. You can say uh, absorption and then assimilation and ultimately digestion. Clear? So means the third step. You can say absorption. So absorption of the digested products we will see here. First of all, absorption is the process. What is the absorption here? They have given. Absorption is the process by which. the end products of the digestion pass you know end products of the like carbohydrate end products is the glucose molecules right end products is the fatty acid and glycerol and protein end products is the amino acid so these end products uh, products of the digestion pass through intestinal mucosa it is the internal layer we already seen four different layer outer is the serosa then muscular is the submucosa then mucosa so mucosa is the inner lining of the intestine and this mucosa this mucosa part means this uh, absorbed this digested food products uh, pass through pass through intestinal mucosa and where it will reach it will reach into the blood or lymph so this phenomenon it is known as the digestion so simply you can say after the digestion digested products it will pass through the intestinal mucosa and it will arise it will leap into the means you can say it will arrived arrived into the blood or lymph okay next it is covered out by passive sorry it is carried out not covered it is carried out by the passive or active or facilitated transport mechanism so here you can say active and passive and facilitated so you know passive there is no uh, there is no need of energy and active there is need of energy and facilitated protein facilitated transport so there is also need and there is no also need of the uh, energy clear and here they have a uh, next if you see this figure this figure showing the passive diffusion if you see what it have showing it is showing the passive diffusions where some molecules they can directly pass they can directly pass along the concentration gradient because passive diffusion i am not saying the active so act passive means there is the along the concentration gradient molecules can pass like uh, urea so urea glycerol and smaller lipids moves with a concentration gradient okay so this showing this figure showing the uh, this figure showing the passive diffusion okay it means there is no need of energy so they form the tube uh, tube shaped transmembrane protein channel Uh, you have already studied in case of the plasma membrane so transmembrane protein these have the traverse they have the traverse throughout the plasma membrane maybe two time three time or seven times five times like 12 times different different proteins they have the different times traverse inside the plasma membrane transmembrane protein also known as the integral membrane protein clear so now this is showing the passing here saying small amounts small amounts of the monosaccharides like glucose amino acids and some electrolytes it means what is talking it is talking about the it is talking about the passive diffusion is only talking about the passive diffusion okay so in the passive diffusion you have already seen so these molecules these molecules only they can move along the concentration gradient and there is no need of energy there is no need of energy uh, needed clear so here you can say some electrolytes and chloride ions chloride ions you know so these chloride ions generally generally absorbed by simple diffusion means some electrolytes you already seen glycerol urea and some small lipids molecules it can passively it can passively via simple diffusion they can easily absorb inside the mucosa mucosa that is the intestinal line and after it will arrive or reach into the lymph or blood vessels okay how are some substances like glucose amino acid and absorbed with the help of carrier proteins you have already studied so facilitated diffusion diffusion is two different type two different type one is the 
simple diffusion and there is the facilitated diffusion and in the facilitated diffusion they forms the special type of like voltage uh, voltage ion channels ligand ion channels ligand channels and gated ion channels voltage sorry, voltage lit uh, voltage ion channels and gated ion channels and they also form the some carrier proteins they also form some carrier protein okay and these these uh, proteins involves in the transportation of the molecules via facilitated diffusion okay here also it means you can say here also need no need of the energy okay only the active transport only the active transport there is need of energy takes place because they have the already chain cha that means you can say uh, carrier protein or voltage gated ion channel so there is no need of energy required okay so here however however some substances like glucose glucose amino acid absorbs with the help of carrier proteins and this mechanism is called the facilitated transport so this mechanism called, called the facilitated transport so here in this figure you can see this is the transmembrane protein and this is your molecules this is your molecules and with the help of with the help of this uh, 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 this carrier protein so these molecules are transporting inside the cells okay so that means this is also a type of passive passive transport next next various nutrients various nutrients like amino acid monosaccharide glucose and electrolytes like sodium are absorbed into the blood by active transport okay so these are only absorbed by into the mucosa that means inner layer of the intestine through the active transport you already studied the active transport that means you can say uh, there is need of energy active transport means there is the need of energy required and uh, you already studied so glucose molecules so here they have given one important which i have already asked uh, which i have already asked the various competition not i am saying about the neat exam okay so here they have asked the like sodium glucose transporter this is the this is also called the sim porter you already have studied the co transport okay co transport means when two molecules when two molecules transport together that is called co transport okay and this co transport is also maybe two different types this co transporter also maybe two different types first is the sim porter another is the anti porter clear first is the sim porter and another is the anti porter sim porter means you can say sim porter is the transport of the two molecules is only one direction sim porter means the transport of the molecules is only one direction that is called sim porter and another is the anti porter anti port that means you can say transport of the two molecules in the uh, inverse direction means one is going to uh, inside another is going to outside so this is called the anti port so here this sodium and sodium glucose uh, sodium glucose they are considered as a means sodium glucose they are considered as a sim porter okay and which helps in the absorption of absorption of the sodium as well as glucose molecule and in compare in compare to the anti port so anti port you know that means the sodium potassium pump so sodium potassium pump these are considered as a anti port clear and they have also given the glucose so glucose you know uh, that means there have the number of glucose transporter so number of glucose transporter found inside the plasma membrane so like glut1 glut2 glut3 glut4 glut5 so where glut1 is found in the rbc erythrocytes are rbc glut2 found in the liver and glut3 glut3 were found so glut3 found in the brain and glut5 glut5 found in the small intestine and one more which is the very important glut4 this i have already asked in the neat examination so glucose transporter 4 it is found in the muscles as well as adipose tissue and what is the basic function of the glut4 it involves in the insulin stimulation it means they have it may be asked in your exam so which which glucose transporter molecules related to the insulin insulin transport so glut4 is considered as a it involves in the glucose transporter okay so that means here they have given and after that if you see after that so glucose and these are uh, sodium are absorbed into the blood by active transport active transport means there is the need of energy required okay so now we have how many types of the transport so we have seen 
three different types of the transport first is the passive passive diffusion second is the facilitated transport and third is the active transport so with the help of this figure you can easily understand so this figure showing what it's showing you will see so it's showing the need of atp molecules means here most some some sugars and here they have given the amino acid amino acid means those amino acid which is the charged charged molecule because you know charged molecules they can't traverse they can't pass through the plasma membrane there is the compulsory there is the compulsory to act, active transport needed okay without active transport charged molecules cannot pass okay so here in case of the active transport if you see so there is the atp there is what required there is the atp required clear so here in this figure you can say this is the uh, molecule when the molecule is transporting that time they are consuming the atp and now here these molecules enters inside the cell okay so this showing the active transport okay next one fatty acid and glycerol so this also have given uh, uh, fatty acid you know fatty acid it is the immiscible means immiscible in water how it will enters inside inside your lacteal that means lymph vessel or blood vessels because this is the lipid molecule so it cannot enters directly so there is little bit modification takes place what modification takes place we will see later okay so uh, uh, we will see just now not later okay so here you can say fatty acid so fatty acid and glycerol being insoluble you know very well fatty acid and glycerol being insoluble okay cannot be absorbed into the blood i had already told they are first incorporated into the small droplets that called micelles and uh, we have in the last lecture last video lecture we have discussed about the detail of micelle as well as liposome so this micelle is the small droplets when form the fat large fat molecules breaks into the small droplet structure special structure which is known as the micelle and this micelle which move into the intestine mucosa and where it will move it will move into the intestinal mucosa okay after that what will happen you can see the fatty acid and glycerol the fatty acid and glycerol are reformed reformed into very small coated fat globules called the called the chylomicrons what you will say it is called the chylomicrons okay and uh, chylomicron is the nothing because you, uh, because you know very well chylomicron is a when fat molecules covered with the protein coat protein coat that apolipoprotein so when covered with the apolipoprotein coats so that time they have the outer covering is the protein and protein you know very well it is the soluble in water so it means when the fat molecules covered with the protein coat so these fat molecules can be mixed inside the blood as well as lymph okay so due to this coating takes place and this type of structure is generally known as the chylomicrons okay so chylomicrons means you can say when fat micelles when micelles coated with the apolipoprotein and form a special structure which is known as the chylomicrons and these are transport into the lymph vessels and ultimately it will reach into the lacteal that is lymph vessel and finally in the villi and ultimately release absorbed substance into the blood stream okay so these chylomicrons reached into the lacteal vessel through the villi and ultimately it will reach into the blood stream okay with the help of this figure you can easily understand and this figure explaining uh, very uh, clearly so your concept will be clear if you are understanding this figure okay so here you can see that is the they have given large lipid droplets large lipid i had already told this large lipid droplets molecules breaks into the uh, uh, mixing with the bile salts i had already told this mixing uh, mean when bile salts mixed with each other so that time it formed the micelles means small droplets molecules of the fat here large droplets breaks into the when mixed with the bile salts then breaks into the small small fat droplet structure which is known as the micelles after when breaks then here with the help of pancreatic lipase and they also break okay and after that it will forms the monoglyceride so here it form the monoglyceride and fatty acid you know this is the head and this is the tail so head is the hydrophobic and tail is the uh, sorry head is the hydrophilic and tail is the hydrophobic in nature and this is the mucosal cell this is the mucosal cells by which this uh, this uh, fatty acid or glycerol enters inside the endoplasmic reticulum 
and you know endoplasmic reticulum as well as golgi complex so both are considered as a packaging and transport of the protein as well as carbohydrate every molecules okay so when this fatty acid and glycerol enters into the inside endoplasmic reticulum so now you can see there is the formation of chylomicron takes place okay so here that means ichocytosis of the chylomicron means there is the formation of chylomicron and how it will form when the apolipoprotein covered on the this fatty acid and glycerol molecules and this form the chylomicrons okay and chylomicrons this can be easily absorbed by the bloods okay or firstly it will reach into the lacteal vessels and ultimately it will pass into the blood okay so it means you can say here the basic function of the endoplasmic reticulum and golgi complex there is the secretion of the protein and uh, you already studied so car uh, pgm post translational modification post translational modification means when the protein forms so post translational modification takes place in the endoplasmic reticulum as well as golgi complex because both are correlate both function are correlate packaging and transport involves by this uh, golgi complex as well as endoplasmic reticulum okay so now i am i am understanding your concept is clear with the help of this figure okay so now we are going to finish your class and in the next video lecture we will discuss about the uh, disorder and protein energy malnutrition as well as calorific value so three topic remain in this chapter and in the next video lecture i will try to finish this chapter okay so thank you for your patience and cooperation and i am expecting with you so everyone kindly subscribe my channel and hit the bell icon for future video notification so thank you